Bye. Hey guys, today we're talking about ion chambers, how these ion chambers can be used for measuring the radiation dose, especially in X-ray and CT imaging. I'm Brian from How Radiology Works. We have these bite-sized videos for radiologic technologists to understand the basic concept of how radiology works. If you're new to this channel, click subscribe below and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. This is our air. You can see we have, in our air, we have nitrogen, we have oxygen, we have carbon dioxide, and then we also have electrons. Raisins as electrons, very professional. Indicated here by the raisins. Again, we haven't had all the electrons that are in those molecules indicated, but the idea is that if you have air, and this applies to other matter as well, but if x-rays come in, x-rays can interact with matter. And then again, typically with our diagnostic x-rays, they're gonna be interacting via photoelectric and Compton. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Then they can ionize, and that means basically we're gonna separate the electrons, or at least an electron, from the molecule. That can happen multiple times. But if we don't have any way to measure this right now in the air, the x-ray is just gonna go through and we're gonna have some ionization occur, but we're not gonna have any way to measure it if it just happens in free air. The idea of what's called an ion chamber is to try and measure that effect. So we'll bring in our ion chamber and you can have different geometries of these ion chambers. I'm just showing you one geometry. We call this a parallel plate geometry of an ion chamber because we have these two metal plates and then between those two metal plates, we have a potential. If you haven't seen our video about electric fields, check that one out and about potentials. And this means it's gonna be positive on this side, negative on this side. And the term for that is that this is called the anode and this is called the cathode. So if our x-rays come in again, in this case, now that we have a potential across here where this is more positive and this is more negative, our x-rays come in, again, we have an ionization that occurs. It comes in, again, another ionization event. And let's say a third ionization event shown here. Obviously there will be more happening in reality, but those electrons are gonna get pulled towards the anode and at a slower rate, the positively charged molecules are gonna get pulled towards the cathode. And as the electrons move through the circuit, electrons are negative, right? They wanna to go to the positive. They're gonna pass through this current meter and we're gonna go from a zero current to a non-zero current and that is related to the radiation dose, which would actually be occurring due to these x-rays. And so a calibration factor is used to go from the current, which is measured in amperes, to, for instance, in CT dosimetry, to a value in gray. We're using milligray, typically, in CT dosimetry, because we're looking at values that are much less than one gray. But that's the general idea, is we're just using x-ray interactions inside of air or some other gas in order to make a measurement. And the more x-rays that you have coming, the more interactions you're going to have. CT dosimetry. So if, if you see your physicist going in there and putting a cylindrical phantom in and then putting the ion chamber in. That's the basic idea of what's going on inside of an ion chamber. If you have what's called a Geiger counter, those actually have an extremely high voltage applied, so a very big battery applied across there. And when you have a higher voltage, you can get what's called multiplication so that out of the gas, can come additional events. In this case, if you had one electron coming through, that could lead to multiple 
electrons coming out of the gas. And in that scenario, the idea is we just want to measure if there's any radiation occurring, but not have our radiation uh, measurement be proportional to the amount of actual radiation in there. So that's the idea of a Geiger counter and how that's different than a standard ion chamber that's used in CT dosimetry.